came across this VHS tape. I had never heard of Tomorrow Never Comes. The cast is pretty impressive. Oliver Reed, Raymond Burr, Donald Pleasance. The cover promises lurid violence, so I figure it's got to be worth a viewing. Sitting on a balcony, Any expectations I had for this movie to be decent are destroyed within the first ten seconds by the horrible song that plays in its entirety over the opening credits. I remember how it, used it works against any atmosphere or mood the movie is trying to set up and was probably chosen only because it was free. The gentle rain, the sunrise, and the soft, white snow. Look at this. The movie fulfills its product placement contract for rider trucks and Canadian Tire in a single shot. That's efficiency. We meet our main character, Frank. I don't want to say hero, because what's a hero? He's played by a young Stephen McCaddy, who'd go on to prominent roles in movies like Watchmen and Pontypool. Frank left town some months back for a high-paying job, though the salary couldn't have been that great if he has to hitchhike home instead of taking a train or a bus. Hey, Joey. Hey, Frank. Yeah, go ahead and sit on the kid's cleaning job. What an asshole. I like your suit. The dialogue in this scene is amazingly realistic. Like two actual bored people with nothing to say, Frank and the kid have a nonsensical exchange full of incoherent remarks and awkward pauses. You seen Janie? Janie? No, Janie. You don't know who Janie is? Well, ever since you took off, I just haven't been around. Oh, you mean she's been around, but you ain't been around, huh? I guess so. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen two people in a movie who had less to say to one another. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Since Joey has no idea where Frank's girlfriend is, he tries their apartment. You think he would have looked there first before seeing if she was hanging around the car lot. Wow, does that balcony look unsafe. Frank bursts into his apartment and treats us to some full frontal nudity. Who the hell are you? Now we're getting somewhere. For some reason, the guy yelling at Frank has been overdubbed to take out all the curse words. This is my gall darn room, idiot face. Oh, this is my place. Oh, your place is Where's it? my stuff? Where's my bed? Where's my books? Where's my trunk? Hold on a second. That's my gold arm bed. Those my Where's, Where's Janie? None of your flaming business. Not sure why, since the rest of the movie has a comfortable level of profanity. Who the fuck is that? Well, Frank's girlfriend isn't at the apartment. She isn't at the car lot. I know. The strip joint. That's where I'll find her. Nope. Not there either. Oh, isn't that a shame? <laughs> oh, go on, tell him, Ray. She's got a guy who can afford her. She don't need you anymore. Come on, knock it off, huh? Yeah, and between sets, she's making it on her back, Frankie. Some loudmouth drunk talks shit about Frank's girl, and a fight breaks out. The intensity of this action tour de force is only heightened by the dramatic music. Frank gets his ass handed to him. In this part, where his head is rammed into the wall, remember that, it becomes an important plot point later on. While all this baloney is going on, we meet our other lead character, a police detective played by acting and alcoholic legend Oliver Reed. Here he is at the site of an amusement park accident. <laughs> I hoped the movie was going to turn out to be a murderous carny, but nope, they're going to stick with this thing about Frank and his cheating girlfriend. So Frank tracks his girlfriend down at the apartment her sugar daddy has set her up in. It's a palace compared to that shithole she and Frank were sharing. No wonder she dumped his ass. What the hell do you mean you come walking in here like that? I told you to call it! Here's where things turn bad. Frank flies into a rage. A cop shows up. He and Frank struggle and the cop gets shot in the gut. <laughs> Frank's sure in for it now. Man, look at all the trouble that drunk woman at the bar caused. They really should have broken the news about Frank's philandering girlfriend to him gently. So now we have ourselves a good old-fashioned hostage situation. While Frank holds his ex-girlfriend at gunpoint, the police assemble their sharpshooters. 
How romantic. The guy holding the woman at gunpoint watches her in the shower, while loving music plays on the soundtrack. To be honest, this whole movie has a bit of a misogynistic subtext. You go lie down on the bed and don't move and you do it now. You're lousy old. All women are bitches. Sex they understand, love they don't. That was a weird pan to the old man undressing on the pier. The movie must be setting him up for something important later on. Nope. I guess he was just there for the eye candy. This problem. The great Donald Pleasance shows up playing a doctor, experimenting with a French accent. You got a friend, you got a problem. Me, I don't have a friend. Pretty sure he was never asked to do this voice in a movie again. About here, you see? What? The knock on the head about here. Uh, yeah. Now we have some science talk, explaining the blow Frank received on the head in the bar fight has damaged his brain and is making him behave violently. Really, Frank is the victim in all this, pushed to the brink by his no-good girlfriend. But I don't know, he seems pretty volatile even before he hits his head. He's throwing all the first punches. Give me a beer, will you? Nope. The police plan to knock Frank unconscious by giving him morphine-laced beer. I bet the filmmakers were really nervous having Oliver Reed drink in a scene, as he had a bit of a reputation as a booze hound. I'm away, away shut away, <laughs> big tits. All I've got to do. Your father had All I've got to do. Uh, what he's got a is a problem with me. Than, than yes. this and so I way. had to make up for that. We've got half an hour to talk about that. Uh, if no, that's got to get involved with sexuality yeah. or where our tits lie, that's okay. I don't want to be a chicken ass. Now the movie gets really complicated. It turns out the girlfriend's new boyfriend is some rich and powerful guy everyone in town is afraid of. He's got the police and the mayor in his back pocket. He wants Frank dead because... I'm not sure. I think he wants to keep his relationship with the girlfriend a secret, but everybody in town already seems to know about it. From the maid, to the kid, to that drunk in the bar. The chief of police shows up, played by Manly Raymond Burr. For some reason, he travels with a box of wind-up toys he gives out to small children. He has a secret meeting with the detective in an echoey pool room, with dozens of people looking in, and a few swimming laps in the pool. There are things you should know. He explains that Frank's girlfriend's new boyfriend draws a lot of water in this town, and he wants this standoff ended now, even if it means shooting Frank. Like many gritty movies of the 70s, it has a downer ending. At least, I think it's supposed to be a downer. I'm pretty sure the filmmakers wanted me to sympathize with Frank, the lunatic holding people hostage at gunpoint. After he's gunned down, in true battered woman fashion, the cheating girlfriend grieves over his corpse. He was a good man. I remember how it used to be But that is just a man And time for me to go.